Okay. So there are many techniques which at the end lead to having a single cell or a sec. You can uh, use the, these are all um, things that Gert discussed on the very first day. So you should already knew, know a little bit about these techniques, but maybe you do not know how to handle them in Cell Ranger. And this is what we will be discussing right now. So you can have a multiplex single cell RNA sec. You can have side sec, or sometimes it's also called total sec. You can have um, actually RNA sec, single cell RNA sec, but combined with the, the VDG information, so the TCR information. And you can have the same option, but with multiplexed a version, which is a little bit more complicated. Then spatial transcriptomics is not yet at the level of a single cell, but they were advertising already last year that it should be, but it's not yet. So this will be coming at some point, maybe. Um, and I know uh, we already had some questions in the Slack, so there were there are people probably interested in that. So how to combine, for instance, single cell RNA sec and single cell attack sec. And then the last point is single nuclei RNA sec, which is also a technique that will lead to transcriptomics on a single cell. So these are the type of data that I will try to quickly remind you what they are, and then show you a little bit of how Cell Ranger deals with it and then you will know everything about it. So for multiplex single cell RNA sec, so this is what uh, Tenex uh, would advertise uh, why you should be using it. It's, uh, and it's to nowadays mainly used because it reduces the cost of sequencing. This is something which is quite clear. Um, for the analysis, the only difference uh, compared to standard single cell RNA sec will be in the cell ranger part. So at the end, you will get um, uh, output folders and you would get the the mat matrices of feature barcodes etc so you, it's everything is the same the only difference is in the cell ranger part they say that the key advantage of it should be that it, it increases sample throughput it increases the number of cells assayed in a single experiment and increases the number of possible replicates in a single experiment this has all to do with uh, with cost as well and the last point, which might be the, the most interesting one, is that it enables you to detect multiplets in a more easy way and uh, will remove them even prior to the analysis. And the idea is like that. So this is also something that Gert explained, probably in a more comprehensive way than what I will do. But um, you have these cell multiplexing oligos, so sometimes they're also called hashtag oligos or CMO for short, that are added to the cells and you, therefore you will have one CMO per sample. Uh, so in a pool, this means that the same CMO can be actually used in several different pools and uh, this is quite commonly used. And this technique is similar to measure cell surface protein that we will see just afterwards for total sec or side sec method. And this is how uh, the picture that I uh, took from Gert's presentation, where you can see how it works. So you have for each of those samples, you will have a CMO that tags the sample and then it's mixed in a pool, but it has this tag that we then know which sample it comes from. And uh, therefore afterwards with the encapsulation, you should have one cell per encapsulation. Sometimes you have doublets. And that's where they say um, that it performs well to remove multiplets. It's because uh, what you can see here in this picture is, is that you would have two CMOs in one encapsulation. And so therefore you would definitely know that uh, this is a multiplet and chances are high that, or that you would get multiplets from different uh, um, samples. And so you would be able to remove them already prior to the, to the um, to the analysis. So this is what then um, is performed in Cell Ranger. And in Cell Ranger, how you write it, it's also quite simple. You have to write Cell Ranger multi. So this will be the function you use. You need to specify the idea of the sample you want to look at, and you need to have a path to a CSV file. The CSV file itself should look like this. So should look like this, sorry. It should have um, several entries that are with brackets like that. So you should have an entry called gene expression, an entry called library, and an entry called samples. 
Um, let's start with the last one. So in the entry called samples, you should have two columns or separated with a, with a comma, um, where you should have the sample ID and where you should have the CMO ID. So each sample, as I said, was tagged, tagged with the CMO. So this is something that the biologist would know which sample he tagged with which CMO. So this is something that uh, the biologist should provide to you. And then you can fill this, this slot. And then at the end, the, the, sequencing, uh, the sequencing facility should give you access to fast few files that are for the gene expression and fast few files that are for the multiplexing capture. So the, the information about these CMOs. And so at the end, uh, you have to provide therefore the path to the FASTQ files that are uh, for gene expression and the path to the FASTQ files that are for the, for the multiplexing uh, capture, where each of them will have uh, an identification first. And last point, which is the easiest point to, to get, you for sure need to be able to give a, a reference onto which you want to align your, your reads. And so you need to write the reference and the path to the, this, um, this transcriptome. So this is how this CSV should, should look like. You feel free to interrupt me if you have, if you have questions. So total sec or side sec, uh, this is a reminder of the slide of here. So uh, it's working in a very similar way. And at the end, for the cell ranger part, you will also um, handle it in a very similar way. So what you have for each of the samples is that you will have the information about the RNA and also the information about a certain list of, of proteins that you will have measured. So um, here is an example of a data set I had in my hands where they sequenced a, a list of, I, uh, it was like 20 protein proteins, uh, cell surface proteins that they wanted to, to add to their uh, single cell RNA seq part such that they will be able to very well uh, characterize the cell types. So as you can see here is an example of the CD4 gene. Here is the RNA part and here would be the, the total seq part. As you can see for the CD4, it was not clear here in the RNA seq part, but it was super clear that all these cells here must be CD4 um, positive, if at least if you look at the cell surface marker. And for the CD19 as well, it's quite sparse, and this is what we, uh, what uh, could happen for single cell RNA seq data. And if you look at the protein, it is super well expressed. So I had a question that uh, people asked me, but then what should we trust more, and how can you actually annotate the cells at the end? So the annotation, or at least in this um, data set, how we did it and what they wanted is that I first cluster uh, the cells according to the RNA, but that I use the protein to guide the annotation. And so here you can see a clear cluster, right? And this is the, the cluster which has very high expression of CD19, which is a marker of B cells. But actually, even if I would only have used the RNA-seq part, so the RNA part, even if CD19 was not high, there were other genes that were, that were uh, specific for B cells, such as CD79A, which were actually quite high in that cluster. So I would have been able to identify this as a B cell cluster, even without the protein. However, for instance, for the CD4, it was more tricky because as, as you can see, what we're group, grouping together and what actually was recognized as a cluster in terms of um, um, Surat was this whole part here down here and not all of these cells if you look at the protein were CD4 positive so it was not 100% corresponding in terms of RNA part and, and um, total sec part so protein part and I would probably not have been 100% sure to identify this subgroup as being where the CD4 positive cells lie if I would have only looked at the RNA. So we gained information by having both the protein and uh, the, um, the RNA. So this is just about biology, why it's useful. And at the end, how you do it in Cell Ranger, 
it's uh, also in a similar way. So you would also need to, to specify a CSV file and the CSV file should actually in the same way as uh, before have information about where you can find the fast queue files that are linked to gene expression and the fast queue files that are linked to antibody capture. And you need to also specify a CSV file that enables you to understand uh, the reference used for uh, the tag of the antibody for the, um, uh, for the proteins. And this is the pattern that uh, will, will be used. And this is something that you have to look up for the different technologies that, that are used of what this pattern actually is. And a reference to the transcriptome as always. For BDG single cell RNA sec, the cell ranger enables you to have a function that is just called cell ranger BDG. Again, you need to specify the ID and the fastq file, so the path to the fastq file. You also have a CSV file that you would uh, use here. You would also specify the transcriptome here. The transcriptome would be uh, with the VDG, and then. Uh, you you would just uh, specify where the fast few files are. So uh, then there's VDG five prime multiplex single cell RNA sec, and I had one in my hand, so I will show you uh, the results just afterwards, uh, where VDG was actually useful. Um, I have to specify something important here is that there was a big change in terms of VDG5 prime multiplex single cell RNA sec at the latest version of Cell Ranger. So uh, everything I say now is for Cell Ranger version uh, from Cell Ranger version number seven on. And before it was quite more complicated. Uh, here you have a um, uh, way to analyze this uh, data. And you have to follow this protocol in order to be able to get to your um, reads at the end, uh, counts at the end. So what it does, and CellRanger uh, again says that it does not really support five prime multiplexed uh, data, and that it uh, it should it doesn't recommend to use that. So that's why they they have made made a warning in previous versions of CellRanger that they did not want that but they have removed that warning from Cell Ranger version seven on. So you can just use Cell Ranger multi uh, and uh, specify the path that are linked to VDG and, and then you use it like that. So the first part of the data set is that you will use demultiplexing using Cell Ranger multi, the single cell RNA sec part, but without touching the multiplexed VDG fast few files. And this will generate BAM files for each sample. So this will be the first step where you will try to demultiplex the sample as if you would only have a multiplexed single cell RNA sec data set. So exactly as I, I showed before um, for the cell ranger multi. This gives you BAM files that you will then have to return back to fast few files uh by making sure that you only create one fast few files per sample and this is quite important and then uh you will have to uh yeah this is the how how the multiplexing part looks like this is exactly the same as i just mentioned before and then you will have then per sample a single cell rna sec file a fast few file per single cell rna sec data and then you will use that with the VDG um, to, um, to, to map to the, to the genome again. And this is then giving you, uh, then, then you're able, able to obtain VDG and RNA-seq results per sample as desired at the end. This is the idea. So then you have a second CSV file that you need to provide. And this second uh, CS CSV file will look like that. You will have a gene expression part, a VDG part. The VDG part is just a reference to the, to the VDG um, um, assembly genome, a transcriptome. And then you will have this, the part of the single cell uh, RNA-sec, so the reference to here it's mouse, um, uh, uh, path to the reference of the mouse transcriptome. 
Then you have here uh, the fast queue files. So you will have used the BAM to fast queue uh, method to, to go from BAM to fast queue files. So probably they will have that in the name. And then you have the, the path to it. And then you, you say, these are this is where you have the gene expression. And then you give the path to the VDG. So these are the two fast queue file paths that you need to specify here. So um, in this data set, uh, what I got is uh, at the same time, the information for the TCR sequencing and at the same time, uh, expression, uh, the RNA stack expression. So at the end, you are able for each TCR clone to understand uh, from which cell it came from. So was this a TCR from a memory cell? Was this a TCR from a naive cell? Or was this a TCR from an active cell? And in the data set I had in my hand, they were asking the question how different immunotherapies would um, react in terms of how different clones, um, what kind of different clones you have in the data set comparing to the different immunotherapies that you would give to the mice. And so here is one therapy, which is uh, the PDL1, and then you have another immune therapy, which is the PD1 IL2V, and then the combination of both. And what you can see here at the end, this is a percentage of the expanded clones, so the clones that are probably doing something. And you can understand that um, in the case of the PDL1, you have more naive cells that are not found in the other ones. You, you have no active cells or early active cells, and you have a higher proportion of memory cells. In the case of the pd one il 2 b you can see that you have much more early active cells. So this might be the cells that are uh, actively fighting the tumor. And you can see that the combination do, does not lose those active cells. And in terms of TCR, we actually were also able to to show that the one therapy, so this one, would create much more diverse cells, diverse TCRs. This therapy was creating much more expanded TCRs and the combination of both would benefit from both. So having a more diverse uh, setting and having a more expanded setting. So this is then why the double therapy worked better. And this is, I think, where it was nice to have this at the same time, the TCR, and at the same time, the understanding of the cell types gained by the RNA support. So, uh, spatial transcriptomics is another subject. So, it's quite a difficult to to analyze. As I understood, I didn't have it in my hand. But um, so, at the end, what what they gained up to now, I think, is ten micrometer thick tissue slides that you then have spots of fifty five meter uh, barcodes, and then you have the information on those fifty five micrometer. Um, what is the expression uh, in that spot? So at the same time, you will have the spot information, so where it is uh, on your slide, and you will have the expression of the cells inside. However. What you do not really know is what number of cells you have inside. So you don't know if it's uh, unique cells or if it's uh, 30 cells or 50 cells. And uh, this is something which is quite challenging uh, in this uh, type of analysis. Instead of cell ranger, you use something very similar, which is called space ranger. And the output are also quite similar to cell ranger. So, you, you not only have actually information about the RNA sec, but you also have some information about the X, Y coordinates of the section. So this would be just another layer of information on top of your um, single cell data. So they said you would, they would reach to a resolution which is at the level of a single cell, but they did not yet. Um, and so they want to go down to 10 micrometers such that they would be able to go to a resolution of a single cell. Uh, you can use SERAT for the analysis, uh, but there are also some other uh, very specific analysis, uh, um, data analysis tools that have been de developed. You can use, for instance, a spatial experiment object, which is a special type of object that is relying on, on um, um, that is similar to a, a uh, summarized experiment object, as well as the single cell experiment object to deal with that data type. And at the end, 
the 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 function that you have to write in space ranger is just space ranger count and then put down your the the slide so it's quite it's quite easy to to use so multi omics uh, there is the possibility to combine single cell rna sec with single cell attack sec uh, on same cells and this is quite interesting and uh, single cell RNA sec then would help the attack sec, attack sec single cell to be annotated by doing a label transfer. So it's with the function label transfer that we discussed um, uh, yesterday that you are able to then um, link together the RNA sec part and the attack sec part. And at the end, for the single nuclei RNA sec, so this is a reminder also of the slide of um, head. Uh, it's an alternative to single cell RNA sec, and it's quite useful when you have tissue that is difficult to di dissociate. And there are no ribosomes, so no translation of transcription factor during processing. You have lower representation of immune cells and surface proteins. So this is something uh, which was shown quite clearly in that article, where they, uh, if you if they went for single cell RNA sec or single nuclei RNA sec on the same tissue, they ended up in one case with uh, uh, roughly fifteen percent of uh, immune cells and uh, almost zero point seven uh, percent or something like that of uh, immune cells in the case of single nuclei RNA sec. So. Uh, my understanding of the biology is not so clear why you would use lose so much immune cells, but the, the, the truth is there. And in terms of analysis, there is actually no difference in a cell arranger part. You treat them exactly the same way. Uh, there is just a difference in the QC because uh, you don't have to remove um, high mitochondrial content uh, cells. And otherwise, it's treated exactly the same way in terms of the, the analysis. So I went a little bit fast. So if you want me to go back to one of the, the, the methods, because it's the one that you will be going for in your data set, uh, let me know. And that's, I think, it for that presentation.